In this video, I'm gonna go over the most important tools you need starting out. There might be plenty of other tools that would be useful, but this is basically the stuff that the bare minimum, if somebody is like just starting out, the bare minimum things that they're gonna to need to take to an event. This is not including like the robot itself, but anything else. And I'm also gonna go over the costs just to sort of paint a picture of how much things cost. So I'll be pretty much, the costs on screen are gonna be the minimum costs or minimum expected. Like you might be able to get, find stuff cheaper than that, if depending if you like get it from like Alibaba, but this is like typically like think like Harbor Freight, that sort of cheap. First thing I'm gonna talk about is the controller itself. I'm counting this as a tool because it is something that doesn't go in the box and is gonna last you a while. Um, my pricing is based on the Flysky FI6 because that's the one everyone recommends because it can be used with some receivers that are great for combat robotics like the FS2A or the Malinky. And I put $45 for the price because even though I paid, I think, $60 for this one, the you can definitely find it cheaper than even $45. Um, I think... You might be able to find even cheaper ones than the Flysky FSI 6, but I feel like anything cheaper than this, you're probably gonna be missing out on some features. And unlike other tools, where if you buy a cheap one, it just ends up breaking and then you have to replace it. If, if you buy a cheap one of these, you're gonna end up having to replace it because it doesn't have features you need. So this is gonna be one of the big price points starting out most likely. The next thing I'm gonna talk about is the battery charger or LiPo charger. These can be found as cheap as $35. Unfortunately, I don't have a specific product recommendation because the one I have, turns out it didn't have a XT38 like connector on it, which is kind of annoying because a lot of batteries that we use are XT have XT30 connectors. So when you're looking for one, make sure or even buy separately the adapter. Make sure you have the right adapter for the batteries that you have. Um, typically, you're going to want JST and XT30, especially for ant weights, maybe XT60 on the bigger robots. You're also going to need a LiPo bag. Pretty much every event that I go to uh, recommends, or sorry, not recommends, requires you to have a LiPo bag for charging. Uh, those can be found pretty cheap, though. Also, I should note for the pricing of the soldering kit and anything after this, I got the prices off of Harbor Freight because I felt like that'd be a good baseline for the minimum cost. Even though you could find something cheaper, that's gonna be the cheapest that you'll be able to find readily. Next, you're gonna need a soldering kit. It should include, obviously, the soldering iron itself, or if you buy these, you can buy these things separately, however you wanna do it. But it needs to include the soldering iron itself, a little stand for it, because it gets hot and you don't wanna set it on the table, solder, and a little thing to clean off the tip of the soldering iron. I also recommend having flux because it just kind of helps get, you know, solder off of things. Um, this is one of those things that it's easy to find them pretty cheap and a cheap one will go a long ways, but getting a more expensive one maybe later on is going to actually help you a lot. Um, I am personally of the philosophy that if you're buying a tool, I would buy a cheap one. And if you're using it enough that it breaks, then buy a nice one because a lot of times you know you might buy a tool and then you buy an expensive version of it because you're like oh i'm gonna buy an expensive one and it's gonna last me forever but then you never use it again because you use it for like one project next thing is wire strippers shouldn't need too much explanation as to why just i would just make sure that the on the smallest end that they're able to strip 22 AWG wires. That's probably about as small as you might go. Maybe next we're going to talk about the screwdrivers or Allen keys, depending on what screws your robot uses. Personally, I don't see a problem with using Phillips head screws since it might be easier just to bring a screwdriver than like a bunch of different Allen keys. And also I'd say if you're, you know, look, a lot of people end up getting the screwdriver sets that come with a bunch of different heads. Just make sure it has the sizes you need. Cause sometimes, especially if you're using like a, if you're doing like fairy weights or some screws on ant weights, they get really small and they, some sets might not have some that go as small as the heads of the screws on your robot go. Or sometimes it's like, oh, I've, I use a bunch of metric screws on my robot, but I bought a set that only has imperial heads. It might work for most parts, but it's not gonna be quite as good. 
next tool is pliers. One about this size will be pretty good for like an ant weight. And having the tapered head really helps to like get into spaces. You pretty much, for a combat robot or an insect weight combat robot, having a pair that has the tapered head is pretty much a necessity. Next we have side cutters. These can really come in handy sometimes. I like to get the angled head ones because you can really get up to the surface of stuff. Sometimes, you know, you need to make some quick alterations. I've had to cut the tips off of forks before, kind of tri trimming 3D printed parts or like kind of when there's like a weird, when I get hit in a weird spot and there's like stringy parts coming out of the robot, this can really get that excess off of there. File is another thing. A lot of times I've had to like smooth out forks, you know, that have gotten chewed up or something is kind of after hits a lot of times things you get burrs that aren't you don't necessarily want there sometimes you smooth things out so you're not scraping against the ground or maybe you want to be closer to being scraping off the ground but not quite having a file is pretty useful i've never actually used sandpaper at an event i think i've brought sandpaper but I, a lot of times using a file is just easier the next two are probably obvious electrical tape and duct tape electrical tape is obviously good for covering up any electrical connection you have as well as just a temporary tape sometimes that you want to be able to take off easily. Duct tape, you know, when you need something a little bit stronger, sometimes you use it for impromptu repairs, but more often I actually use it to sort of keep my electronics where I want it to be. I actually keep everything in the robot using duct tape before I put my top plate on. I actually use Gorilla Tape instead of regular duct tape because it's a little bit stronger and stickier, but I'm pricing this base off of duct tape. The last thing I'm going to talk about is a hot glue gun. I don't actually use it for anything other than my wiring. Pretty much every soldering connection, I cover it with hot glue. Now, it acts as a little bit of a um, insulator, but also the hot glue strengthens the connections because there's definitely been a couple fights where I've lost or, connect or soldering connections just failed. And I like to use hot glue to reinforce them. You know, you could say that maybe I should just get better at soldering, but I even if I, as I get better at soldering, I, the redundancy definitely helps and doesn't hurt. Well, other than like weight and stuff fitting inside the robot, I guess. I guess in that way it does hurt. While editing, I decided I should probably add safety glasses, even though I sort of pick tools that don't require them. The moment you are removing material using a tool that has a motor. You should absolutely have safety glasses. So grinding, sawing and drilling and cutting stuff like that. I tried to keep this video pretty focused and I only put things that I used at practically every single event. There were definitely a couple things that I debated putting on it, this list, but didn't, but didn't quite make it. So feel free to let me know now down below how wrong I am and that thing that I should have absolutely put on here that everybody needs to bring to an event. This week's video is hopefully going to tie into a video I plan on doing later about the costs of getting into combat robotics, but I also needed something quick because I shifted my release schedule of videos up a whole week, so I needed a video a lot sooner than I originally intended. The Hodag video took a lot of effort and I've just been solely focused on getting prepared for the MRCA finals the last couple of weeks, so I didn't have much time for a more involved video. With that said, if you're watching this the week this video comes out on Saturday, they're going to have the stream for the MRCA finals with the best ant weight and beetle weight bots in the Midwest. I'll be driving Bigfoot there, and if you want to catch that, go to Robot Smashing League here on YouTube on Saturday. If you're looking for something to watch next, here's my video on combat robot electronics, focusing mostly on ant weight robots.